Good morning. Welcome to today's Daily Reflection. I have noticed that whenever I have a glass of wine on a Saturday night, I'll I'll almost always decide I'd quite like another. Similarly, whether it's a Malteser or a chocolate biscuit, one never quite seems enough. But while we can just about do without wine, Maltesers or chocolate biscuits, something that is very necessary for our our survival is water. Though it doesn't quite have the same attraction, it is something we tend to take for granted a lot of the time, unless, of course, we use it for making tea or coffee or washing the car. But I was unaware that the human body is more than half water. That, for example, someone who weighs in at around 170 pounds, 100 pound is just water weight. The 70 pound is everything else, bones, brains, tissues, muscle. So for the most essential part of our daily life, our daily diet, should be water. But looking further into this, apparently water is necessary for the transport system around our bodies. In digestion, it carries the nutrients as well as the oxygen to every cell. Water is necessary to keep our bodies clean inside and out. It lubricates our bodies. It keeps our joints slick and skin supple. And it helps keep our temperature even, especially in summer, when our cooling system of sweat is activated. With not enough water, our body will quickly begin to give us warning signs through a thirst, telling us that we need to drink more water. If we ignore this warning, this can lead us to dehydration, headaches, feeling dizzy, or worse. I believe our hearts and souls can get dehydrated too, which is why so many young people in our more affluent societies today, while they might search for a meaning of life, they are increasingly expanding or redefining their spiritual search around more non-religious activities rather than around a single institution or faith system. 2,000 plus years ago, things maybe weren't too different because as we found ourselves in our journey through the Jesus 100 book, here at the Gospel of John, chapter 7, which writes, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of running water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit, who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. This is the word of the Lord. It's easy to look about us today to see the evidence of a spiritual thirst all around us through an increasing isolation and loneliness of people today. This all comes from a hunger deep in every one of us, a deep craving for some sort of something in many cases for hope. There are two biblical characters, both from John's Gospel, Nicodemus and a Samaritan woman at the well. There are many similarities as well as differences in each of them. Nicodemus, a highly educated Pharisee who came to Jesus in a cover of darkness. With all his education and study of the Bible, he still left confused. He just didn't get it. Unlike Nicodemus, the woman was, to the Jews, a despised Samaritan. He was a Jewish man. She was a Samaritan woman. He was educated and orthodox in the Jewish faith. She was uneducated and, to him, a heretic. He was influential, a leader. She was a nobody. He was upper middle class. She was lower class. He was morally upright. She, to him, was immoral. He sought out Jesus because he recognised his merits. She had no no idea who the stranger at the well was, who had sought her out. He came to Jesus at night. Jesus and the woman met at noon. Nicodemus responded slowly and rationally. She responded quickly and emotionally. But Jesus loved both of them. Jesus felt thirsty and asked her for water. He looked at her and could see a thirsty soul, see a thirst that came from brokenness in her personal relationships, 
from fears that brought her to the well in the heat of noon, rather than face the other women from her community who would have gathered first thing in the cool of the morning. Jesus saw that her life was a mess. Our lives can be a mess too, maybe not like hers exactly, but like her in many ways. We need what only Jesus can provide, his grace that does not ignore our sin, but is greater than our sin. But like her, he forgives us anyway. Accepting the living water meant accepting Jesus himself. To us today, that is extended to his Holy Spirit and his grace. And to finish with a prayer that Robin Gamble writes at the end of this chapter. Lord Jesus, I live in a desert. Help me every day to be still, to be thirsty, to be open. Open to receive and open to drink. Amen. Well, whatever you do today for the rest of this week, do it with a smile on your face if you can. In the meantime, be good, be careful. Bye for now.